Yes guys, Jack here from Welding Supplies Direct. We've got another little treat for you today. Joe is back in from Bola Welding as we've had some high demand on a certain machine of his. Oh, we can see him in the background, here he is. Mr. Joe Irvin himself. How are we looking? What are we looking at today then, Joe? So this is the, uh, it's the Euronos 2000 SMC. Okay. Um, this is our little 200 amp multi-process machine. We've had a lot of demand online uh, from people wanting to know what the machine's capable of. Um, yeah, I can imagine it's, it's a big market at the minute, isn't it? So it really yeah, is. I was going to yeah. say you definitely, you, you guys have definitely got a right machine and definitely something to consider. So just uh, if, if you want to have a look at a couple of bits on it, I'm just interested as in actual physical the machine itself. It looks small. It looks compact. It is, yeah. So it, it takes a five kilo reel. It's really okay. designed as something that you might be taking out on site, maybe keeping it in the back of the van. Um, this sort of machine really doesn't need to be, you know, taking up a lot of space. So it's small, it's compact, it's lightweight, um, it's truly portable. Okay, so being small and compact, does that does that sacrifice on duty cycle or? Not at all, no. So, so these machines are actually built on the same production lines as our bigger amperage three phase machines oh nice to know yeah um, okay so same means, as the one we did last week nice yeah so the materials used are the same uh, the pcbs are made on the same production lines um it's you know the, the, they share a lot of the same components so for example you've got these nice armored hinges on the side here um it's the same aluminium chassis you've got the same high impact high impact classic uh, plastic uh, panels on the front okay um it really is a machine. It's been built to take a beating. Okay. It's, it's nice. by no means, uh, you know, no no corners have been cut on the build quality. I'm just curious for anyone else. Um, obviously, I think I know already, but these are built I, in Italy, if, if I'm correct. In Italy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So, Selco, who are now part of the uh, the Bowler Welding Group, they've been building on the same site in Cittadella since I think it's the uh, the early '80s, I believe. So there's a lot of pedigree in these machines. Yeah, um, well-known machines, definitely. Yeah, the the new to the UK market, but particularly over in Europe, um, Selco have always had a very good name. Uh, I say, especially with your your backup and your service, I could see these, I could see these really being a big contender for the likes of Esab and Lincoln and everyone else. So. I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. So. Right, guys, I wanted to get some questions out of the way that you guys have been asking us on social media. You've been messaging us through Facebook, Instagram, and stuff like that, all about these machines, especially on the welding forum, about how these machines stack it up in one mil, especially one mil diameter wire on spray transfer, to see if it can handle the thicker materials. And like, I'm, I'm interested to get Joe's reaction um, to see what he thinks of this. And I'm, I'm sure he'll be as confident as ever. Um, but if I, I'm going to run through some questions, we're just going to see how it's going to work and how Joe would set this up and what he thinks would be the best option for yourselves anyway. So, as I said, one mil spray transfer. Can how do you it? think you can do it? Like the yes. Comfortably? Yeah, quite comfortably. You've heard it here, you've heard it here. Jack, we've, uh, we've got some 10 mil plate. Um, okay. We've got some one mil wire on the machine. Um, we're going to set it up and we'll, we'll demonstrate to you. Uh, how well it runs. Um, I would recommend if you are running a one mil wire on this machine in spray transfer, um, I would recommend putting at least an MB25 torch onto the machine. Yeah, um, 250 ampere cold torch. It's, it's got to be yeah. done really. That it, 15 will get way too hot, so. It will, yeah. So we, we would recommend upgrading to a, 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 as a minimum, an MB25 torch. Um, but apart from that, the, the machine has got a very good duty. So cycle. you say upgrading. Um, just curious, what bits actually come with the machine? That's that's something else we got asked. A lot of people want to know what sort of accessories they get, um, if your delivery is included, all that sort of stuff. That comes from us. But I want to know what comes from Joe as the manufacturer. What torches, quality of earth cable, and stuff like that. So yep. I'm just interested. Does it come the reg? Doesn't come with a regulator. Doesn't come with a reg. No. Majority of the time we put regulators on ourselves. Um, so that's not too much of an issue. But torch wise, what are we looking at? So standard torch that comes with the machine is the Bowler MT150. Which okay. is an air cooled uh, 200 amp uh, MIG mag torch. Okay. Um, as I say, for, for, for heavier duty applications, we would recommend 
upgrading to a, to a, as a minimum a, an MB25 torch. Um, but with the machine, you will have the, the MIGMAG torch included. Um, you will get the uh, you'll get a 25 mil work return cable, which is rated for 200 amps. Which nice strong clamp is. as well. I'm liking the, it's got good snap on an earth clamp. Quality, quality. Yeah. It's what we like. And then Jack, if um, if if the customer is using uh, the the machine to its full capability, you can also specify that it comes with yeah, yeah. the Bowler ST1700 uh, Euro Connection TIG torch. So the TIG torch, as you can see, has a Euro Connection on the machine end. That means that it goes straight into into the front of the machine. Um, it'll take mm -hmm. the gas through the solenoid at the back of the machine. That means that you've got a standard TIG handle at the top. So Nice and clean. That's, that's a big thing to note as well. Like that's A lot of machines you don't, especially multi-process machines, you don't get this sort of attention to detail, um, especially the up-down control on the torch as well, which is a really nice feature. Yep. Um, but the Euro connection definitely tidies it all up. Yep. Makes it, there's no spurious wires hanging out the front, so I'm a, I'm a big fan of it. There's, there's no need to use the valve torches either. So that means no. you're only using gas when you're welding. Um, it also means that it's nice and simple to use. So it's just a case of press the trigger, the gas comes on, you arc up and weld. Nice and so simple. as features go, I'm pretty impressed. I like the bits that come with the machine. I like the build quality of the machine. Um, am I right in thinking these are only 240 volt at the moment? 240 volt at the moment. 240 yep. volt at the moment, okay. I would say though, Jack, um, if people are after more than the, the more than 200 amps, um, you know, if you're running a if, if you're running one mil wire or 1.2 wire yep. daily consistently, um, we do offer a 270 amp version uh, ah, from a three phase okay. supply. Um, but as I say, yeah, this is uh, it's a two 240 volt supply, 200 amps. Uh, capable of running 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1 mil wire. Okay, nice. Well, we're going to get into it anyway. We're going to show you some of the welds. We're going to go off first. We're going to do the 1 mil spray. So I'm interested to see that. We're going to go into some. We're going to keep to the 1 mil, but I wanted to go into a dip transfer just to see how stable it could be on a thicker wire. Um, and then we're going to go through the TIG and the stick also. So we'll just get set up, set up for that now. Okay, so one of the main questions we've been asked is how does this machine weld with one mil wire and spray transfer? So I'll show you how we would set up for that and uh, we'll do some welding. So to set the machine up, we've got six buttons, one dial. So to tell the machine what, what wire we're welding with, we're gonna press this synergic button here. We're gonna tell it that we're welding mild steel with a CO2 argon mix. As you can see, we have a number of uh, synergic lines for different applications, from mild steel to stainless steel. We've got koozie wire, for MIG brazing, flux cord wire. In this case, we're going to go for an argon 18% CO2 mix. We're welding with one millimeter wire, and we're into the setup mode. So at this point, Jack. What we're going to do is we're going to tell the machine what trigger mode we want. In this case, I want to set a hot start and a crater fill. We've got our arc length selection here. In this case, I'm going to leave it as standard, leave it in the synergic mode. And finally, on the inductance, again, I'm going to set it to zero. So we're doing nothing special here. We've selected a one mil SG2 wire. We're going to turn the machine up to around about 10 meters per minute and we'll see how it welds.
Right Joe, we've just been having a go with the machine doing some one mil spray. We've been getting very close. We thought we'd go. How thick is this plate, Joe? How, how thick it's are we talking? Mil. 12 mil steel plate. 12 mil. So what we were trying to do, Joe's just trying to show that he's going totally over the top with this machine. You wouldn't ever normally go 200 amp on a 12 mil plate, would you? No. So if, you, if you're in a situation where you're going to be welding 12 mil plate, you know, maybe it's structural steel, you've got some framework to do, this isn't the machine that we would recommend. But the whole point of doing this test is that if you're ever in a, you, you know, you're backed into a corner, yeah. you need to get a weld done. And this is machine, this, this, this machine is all you've got available to you. You know, it, it'll do it at a push. Okay, nice. So I'm just going to have a look at these now. You see there, so three pass? Three pass run, yep. I think we were pushing out about 24, 25 volts, something like that. Yeah. Really running the machine at its limit. About 220 amps as well, peaking about 20 amps over what it actually states. So, yep. no, I'm dead impressed. I think it's impressive. I'd like to see it on the thinner stuff now, please, Joe. Let's go. Okay, so Jack, uh, we're going to switch between welding some some 12 mil plate. Uh, we're now going to weld some 2 mil uh, sheet metal. So to do that, because this is a synergic machine, it's literally a case of using the dial to turn the power down. I'm going to set the material thickness to around about 2 mil, and if it needs adjusting from there, we'll have a look at it. Any chance you can show me how to put this thing into TIG and we can have a go with its uh, DC pulse lift TIG? Yeah, cool. So switch it from MIG into TIG. It's just a case of disconnecting the MIG torch. The Euro connection TIG torch goes straight into the front. And then your earth cables here. It's a case of switching your work return. into the other socket and from there on the panel we switch into TIG and it's as simple as that nice and simple that's what we like to see right okay so for anyone who doesn't know this just run through the TIG side on it Joe just to explain it for people who ne necessarily haven't seen a multi-process TIG set up before yeah of course so Jack apart from the fact that we don't have the the HF uh, ignition this is a full process TIG set. So that means if you want to come into the panel. Um, so we've got full control over the latch. So four touch, we've got the 4T log and the two touch. We've got the pulse control here. So we can go from, from constant current, well then 140 amps at the minute, into pulse and from there into fast pulse. That gives you access to a, a, a higher pulse frequency. Um, I say it's, it's a good job worth mentioning that there's not many multi-process machines that have this sort of feature, especially the pulse feature, that's a real nice touch. Yeah. Um, I think they've done really well adding these sort of features into it, hence why the bowlers, are, are, we feel, are pushing that little bit further than everyone else at the moment. Jack, so, it, it just ties in with what we were saying before, you know, this is a full process machine, it's not lacking any quality, um, you know, it's just a small machine. 200 amp multi-process. That's great. Right, we'll have a go. We'll get this set up and we'll get some shots of you doing some TIG welding on some nice stainless we've got here. Cool. Right, Joe, just had it finished up with the TIG. Yep. How do you think it went? It's a really nice machine for TIG, to be honest. 
Um, you know, as we said before, apart from it not having the HF ignition, this is a full process DC TIG welder. So anything you can do with a standalone DC TIG, you can do with this machine. So it's nice, I'm very impressed with the results. There's not many multi-process machines that can push out a weld that comfortably on a DC lift TIG as well, especially with the pulse, it's just that nice little extra feature as well. And Jack, I mean, uh, the duty cycle on this machine, we. Uh, we put this out around about 180 amps for the cap. You know, mm -hmm. 180 amps, the machine will run all day. Um, it's got a duty cycle of 200 amps at 35%. You know, so this is a machine that you can- Probably, I think that's best in its class, actually, over all the competitors. So yeah, it wouldn't surprise it's me. It's uh, no, I'm dead impressed. And we're just gonna move now on to some arc and a bit, bit, bit of stick welding, really, um, just as its final process and just see how we get on with that. Are you able to run us through how, how we switch these bits out then, Joe? Yeah, of course. So all we've done, I've I've actually left the TIG torch in the machine still, so that's okay. still plugged in. So all it's a case of doing is, like when you're setting up any machine, we can see that on the rods that I'm using, I'm using our Fox EV50 7018 rods. Um, the packet will tell you what polarity to set the electrode. This is very important to notice as well. There's a lot of people I talk to on the phone and they don't actually notice yeah. that there's a certain way that you should run your rods. So it, it really couldn't be any easier, Jack. So we know that it's electrode positive. We know from reading the, the description that it's a basic coated electrode. So because of the, the panel on the front of the machine, we can actually tell the machine what type of rod we're running. So in this case, you can tell it what type of flux is on the rod. In this case, it's a basic, we can tell it what size rod we're welding with, in this case. So it's programmed up to 5 mil as well? Up to 5 mil, yep. We're using a 3.2 millimetre rod. Um, it has got voltage reduction on there, so if you're using this machine, you know, if you're using it in an enclosed environment, um, you know, it has got the safety feature in there to make sure that, uh, you know, the, the user is nice and safe. Um, you're not going to end up uh, harming yourself, you know, if uh, if the electro gets caught on anything. Okay. Um, and from there, it's just a case of set your amperage and you're ready to weld. Okay, so one thing to remember with this machine, by telling it what type of flux is on the rod and what size you're welding with, it'll actually set your arc force and the hot start to suit. So the welding dynamics on the machine really are tailored to take this flux off. They really are tailored to the type of rod that you're running. A really nice, smooth arc. Right guys, just finished up with Joe from Bowler Welding. As you can see behind me, he's packing up and getting all his machine broke down. Have you enjoyed today, Joe? Big time, mate. Yep. Big time. Like I said, I've been very impressed to see what your machine could do. We've been doing some stick welding just to finish off, some vertical ups and stuff like that. We, I, I'm, I'm really impressed by this machine on a whole, guys. They, they've really thought about some certain bits and pieces, all the, all the, all the processes have really, really been thought through. I feel like sometimes when you have multi-process machines, they can be predominantly MIG, predominantly stick, something like that, and the other processes sort of get left behind. It's it's not like that with the bowler machine. I like how they've put a little bit of effort in with the, the TIG is really good, how they put the pulse in, and you've even got the fast pulse in there. That's even, that's a, that's a big bonus for me. Um, apart from that, for anyone who's using this machine, Generators and stuff like that are absolutely fantastic on these machines. So you're running 5.7 kVA generator can run this machine absolutely flat out, which is even I think it's even down to 4.2 on TIG, yep. which that's unheard of really. I say a lot of machines in its class are nearly at the seven, eight, even nine kVA range. So for anyone in sort of agriculture people working on site and stuff like that. This is definitely a machine I would consider. Um, apart from that, if I was in a service department, that would be 
if I wasn't sure what I was going to be working with, that's that's definitely something I'd think about because I'm covered on most bases for this machine. It's got all the programs already set up in there. I'd be very surprised if there was a process that this machine could come across that it couldn't do. Um, obviously, you haven't got the AC on the TIG, but it actually MIG welds aluminium very, very well with minimal spatter and minimal charring as well on, an, on a normal standard torch with a Teflon liner. So I'm really impressed on that front. And what we're going to do, I'm going to drop Joe's LinkedIn in the description. Um, that's where he posts a lot of his work. If you guys want to keep up with what he does, he goes out doing demonstrating. He, he's the demonstrator for Bowler UK. Um, he's real great guy, good person to work with, can't moan. He, he's been out, he's helped us a lot and answered a lot of your questions as well. They're just the drop of a hat. So we'll definitely be having him on the channel again. Obviously, if you guys can like and subscribe to us as well, that would be much appreciated. Helps us out more than you think. And for now, we'll wait until you see you guys on the next one. Say bye, Joe. See you later. Da.